long time. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Okay, this is going to be a wonderful ride. It's going to be a good, good time. Amen. I believe that, you know, God created us for relationships. He created us for community. He created us to enjoy one another. And uh, I'm going to be teaching this week and next week on single and married. And the things I'll share today will benefit the singles. It will benefit the married. The things I'll share next Sunday will benefit the married and the single too. So uh, I want you to learn all you can learn and let's, let's do this together. Let's just have a conversation around these things. God designed us for relationships. Say with me, I'm designed for relationships. You don't believe it? Say it right. Say, I'm designed for relationships. There is something about um, you that is incomplete until you have the right relationships in your life. God designed us. Human beings, we are designed. It's good to see it. We are designed to be in very, very uh, functional relationships. You are not a wholesome person until you are connected in the right way to community. If I want to title this, I'll, I'll title it um, uh, Single and Whole. Amen. Look at someone and say, I'm single and whole. The meaning of whole is an interesting... Uh, I checked up the meaning of whole. Let me check it. It means to, to, be, to be in an unbroken and undamaged state. God wants you to be whole as a single person, even as a married person. I'm trying to connect wholeness and relationships or relationships and wholeness. Um, to be whole means uh, to be complete in yourself. Something that is complete in itself. So there is a wholesomeness that come in our lives as a result of relationships. I'm trying to say that when you find the right relationships and you discern and maximize the right relationships, you become a better person. Amen. Look at someone and say, you are better with relationships. Say it again to someone and say, you are better with relationships. So God wants us to experience love. We are love beings. You are a love being. You are designed to love and be loved. Did you hear what I just said? Throw your head back. Do something and say, I'm a love being. Talk to yourself. Amen. You are a love being. Why? It was love that created you. God is love. Love created you so that you can be loved. And so that you can also express love. You were created by love. You were created in the image of love. So you are a love being. And I would always say that the reason, one of the reasons why God created us is that he is love. And love must always find expression. So he created us to find expression. Oh, hallelujah. God created you to love you. So if you never get married, did you hear what I just said? If you never get married, God created you to love you. If you, if you, if you position yourself to receive God's love, you'll be fine. I'll love you to get married. Scripture wants you to get married. But I'm saying in case it never happens, you are a love being and your number one source of love is God. That if you wake up every morning, Ugo, and stand before God, he wants to shower you with his love. You can't even love another person until you have received love from God. We don't create the love we have for people. We receive the love we have for people. Oh guys, Manifold, are you with me this morning? You cannot create love for people. You receive love. In fact, the love you have for people is reflective. The more you receive God's love, you bounce back that love to other people. God is love and he created you with a capacity to love and be loved. Love must, must be expressed. Love must be given and it must be received. You need relationships in order to give love. Did you hear what I just said? I said you need relationships in order to give love. If you're a love being then you need a context 
to show that love, to release that love. So relationships is God's way of allowing you manifest your true self. Amen. So you can only survive around people. You can only express yourself fully around people. You know, when you begin to understand that you were designed to be a lover. First John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Look at someone and say, I'm a lover and I'm here to love you. You know, the word love has been so abused. That's why when we say I'm a lover, some of you are wondering, which one is he talking about? It's so, so, so abused. You see, God is love. And the one most abused word in the world is love. So when you say people are talking against me, people are misunderstanding me, God is the most misunderstood. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? They don't understand me. They don't, you don't stop loving because you are misunderstood. You don't leave community because people don't understand you. God himself, people don't understand him. He is love. And when you tell somebody I love you, the person is thinking sex. The person is thinking Nollywood and Hollywood. The person is thinking all that they think. So God feels misunderstood and taken for granted. So that's why real love is founded in you knowing God. Dear friends, let us love one another. Put King James. Since you don't have just glory to God. Look at someone and say, I'm a love being. Beloved. Look at someone and say, you are beloved. Let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. The level to which you love is the level to which you know God. You don't know God because you speak in tongues. You know God because you are a lover and you love like God. Verse 8, glory to God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So love is very key in we living wholesome lives. But we need relationships to keep that going. So how does that apply to a single person? You must be established in love before you get married. You need to be rooted in this kind of love before you get married. And you need to be rooted in certain relationships, established in certain relationships. I talked about your altitude, your attitude, and your atmosphere. Very, very powerful stuff. But you see, relationships are designed to prepare you for marriage. And when I say relationships, I'm not talking about just one kind. I'm going to talk about, about four or five kinds of relationships that are designed to, to prepare you for marriage. You are not supposed to just wake up to want to marry somebody or to, to become a husband or wife or father or mother. No, you are supposed to have been rooted in love and rooted in certain relationships. Establishing those kind of relationships, it will make you a better husband, to make you a better wife, to make you a better father and mother. And if you're married here already, these things are still very relevant to you because God, through this word, is also speaking into marriages. So you need relationships, wholesome relationships. The first relationship you need to be whole as a single person and even as a married person is a relationship with God. Would you write that down? A relationship with God. You need that. Look at someone and say, you need a relationship with God. Before you want to love on any other, you want to express love to any other, you need to know that love relationship that is between you and the invisible. Before you love the visible, you must learn to love the invisible. Ah, a man who loves the invisible can love the visible. Did you hear what I just said? A relationship with God, a vibrant personal relationship with God, which means you must have had a personal encounter with God. You need that sense in which as a single person you have an encounter with God. Now I'm talking to people who are born again, who love God, who wants to do marriage right, who wants to end up marrying the right person, who wants to enjoy their singlehood. You need a relationship with God. You need personal encounters. Write these things down. You need devotions and routines. You need to be established in, under, under a relationship with God. You need to build routines and you need to have a devotional life. Praise God. You need to have a prayer life where you are established in communion with God and you need to have a life that is built on God's word. 
You see, a, a, a relationship with God means that you are relating with his word because God is his word. Uh, that's why what Sheol shared was so powerful that before Adam had Eve, he had the word. Before you go into marriage, you better have a word from God. You must learn how to interact with the word of God. You must learn how to hear God. I don't know how you want to be married as a believer in these times and age and you don't know how to hear God. You say, Pastor, we'll settle that later. No, no. It's, it's, a, it's a non-negotiable. Your ability to hear God as a single guarantees that you'll enjoy marriage. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because marriage requires that you are hearing God. Life requires it. The, the Bible says the just shall live by faith and faith cometh by hearing. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the... So if you cannot hear God about your, your present state, about being single, you may not be able to hear him when you are married because there will be plenty voices. You didn't hear what I said. Right now, develop a relationship with God, the ability to hear God. So I don't get how, how you want to get married and I ask you, what is God saying about it? He's saying, not really. I've not prayed about it. I, I've not heard anything about what God is saying. But I, I, I just feel peace. You know that thing they used to say? I just feel peace. <laughs> the Bible says he speaks peace. Which means he will speak a word that will give you peace. Yeah, I just, hey, peace, anyone can feel peace. So. Yeah? Define that your peace. Because peace can lead to pieces if it's not based on God's word. Hallelujah. Ah. So you must learn to hear God. If there's anything you must develop as a single person, the ability to hear God. Adam, before Eve came, could hear God. That's why God said to him, this is what you should do. This is how we should do it. This is how you should manage the garden. If you can't hear God to manage your life, you can't hear God to bring another person into that life. Every single man here develop the ability to hear God. Your hearing will determine <laughs> who you marry. Look at someone and say, can you hear God? Can you hear God? Oh, come on, touch somebody, shake them up and say, hear God before you marry. Listen, you need attention. You need serious, serious surgery. Don't get married if you can't hear God. Quote me, don't get married if you can't hear God. Because marriage requires men and women who can hear God. When things happen between you and your spouse, you need to be able to hear God concerning your spouse, hear God concerning your children, hear God concerning destinies of the people around you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We don't just need feelers getting into marriage. I just feel like it. No, you hear God. So it starts from a relationship with God. Praise God. Hearing God for yourself. Build character. The fruit of the spirit. De decide. And in that relationship with God, you decide your values. Because your values are now based on God's word. I'm talking about a relationship with God. Because it's in that place of relationship with God, you gain God's heart. And you know what God's will is. And you want to do it. You catch a God-given vision in that place of a relationship with God. You, 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 you know what it is God wants because when you connect with God, he begins to show you his purpose and his plan for your life. So God is love and in your relationship with God, you receive enough love to share with somebody else. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Why do you need to have a relationship with God before you get married? You need enough love to share. Because God is love. Marriage is allowing one more person into the relationship you already have with God. Oh, did you hear what I just said? Marriage is allowing a crowd. Three is a crowd. Oh, come on now. Marriage is you are so much in relationship with God that God said, let's permit one more person to join this conversation. A person that is looking for you as a lady should find you in God. You should be lost in God. Any man that cannot find you in God is not your husband. Did you hear what I just said? They shouldn't find you in parties. They shouldn't find you looking crazy on Instagram. They should find you in God. 
when a person finds you in God, your body is not the attraction. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, when a man finds you in God, your body is not the first attraction. Let me put it that way. So that people say, Pastor Gideon, I, this makeup I'm making. Now you say I should not make it up again. No. No, I'm saying that your body should not be the first thing a real man that is designed for you is attracted to. It must be that quiet and gentle spirit, that thing that makes you you, your value. Any man that is looking for your body, when your body is no more in alignment, I hope you know, this body loses alignment as you grow. Oh, we saw a 90-year-old woman. I am my wife. And the lady, she was still wearing high heels and looking good. That's powerful. But that's not the destiny of a lot of ladies. Amen. <laughs> and men too. Praise God. When a man starts wearing Agbada, start wearing flow shirts, he's covering something. I'm walking on this stomach. He has to go back in. My wife looked at her. I said, what's doing you? What's happening to your stomach? I said, don't worry. Help me. Praise God. For some people, I'm doing well like this. For my wife, I am in a bad state with this stomach because the way to a man's heart is not his stomach. That's what your mother told you. That's not the way to a man's heart. He can eat your food and, and still beat you. The way to a man's heart is not his stomach. It can be one. <laughs> it can be a bus stop on the way, on the way there. The way to a man's heart is his walk and his vision. Oh, did you hear what I said? If you connect with a man's walk and his vision, you've gotten him. The way to a man's heart is how he feels when he's around you, when you make him feel like a king around you. Am I helping any married person, any single person? That's why even as a single person, treat the men around you like kings. Oh, I got a few yeses. Amen. I said, treat the people around you. Treat, don't be a single lady. You're just hitting every, you're just, you say, no, I'm not married to them. No, no. treat a man like a king. Whatever, whatever you call out of a man is what you're going to get. Whether he's a teenager or, 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 or an older man, men want to feel like kings. They want to feel like they are honored and respected. Praise God. Let me quickly run. So I'm just saying, you need a relationship with God. Agape love. So, in a relationship with God, you are, you are founded in agape love. There are different kinds of love. But there is a love you, you become rooted in, in your relationship with God. It's agape. Somebody say agape. Let me touch that, brother. Say it's agape. Agape means the God kind of love. You must be established in that love before you enter any other kind of love. There are at least three other kinds of love. There are some psychologists and other people say there are about seven or eight kinds of love. But agape is the foundational, is the God kind, how God loves. First Corinthians 13, if you want to understand it, just go and study it. It doesn't pride itself. It is, tell me about that love in First Corinthians. It does not take account of records of, of evil. Tell me about that love. It does not, it's patient. It's kind. It's in your relationship with God, you develop that and you're established in that. Listen, if you're not rooted in agape love, you're not ready for every other kind of love. So there is what is called, I'll, I'll go into that. So the next relationship, so, so in this, in this uh, relationship, you learn spirituality. Your relationship with God, you learn how to be spiritual. Marriage is spiritual. Life is spiritual. In your relationship with God, you learn certain things. When you understand life is spiritual, you know you can't marry just anybody. Because if you marry somebody <laughs> who has baggages and you don't know life is spiritual, you spend the rest of your marriage fighting battles you shouldn't be fighting. Am I talking to someone now? If you think life is all about Instagram posts, you don't understand anything. You see, fine girls, fine men with <laughs> fine trouble. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, beauty is vain, no? <laughs> uh, layers of issues. I've seen fine girls with familiar spirit following them. And you're saying, Kai. And some men will be falling into this trap. So what am I saying? Life is spiritual. So before you, marriage is spiritual. Marriage is not a culture that was developed by your parents. Or your tradition. Marriage started with God. It's spiritual. If you marry the wrong person, you can mess up your destiny. 
So that's why you must be a spiritual person to be married. Okay. The second relationship is relationship with family. I know some of you have heard me talk about this thing, but it's very key because that's what will make you wholesome. So a relationship with God is very important as a single person and even as married people to give you that wholesomeness that you need to, to, to live life. Relationship with family. There's power in family. Why? Family is designed by God to shape us. Did you hear what I said? Family was designed by God to shape you, to shape your character, to shape your, 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 your sense, to give you a sense of identity, a sense of uh, a responsibility, and, and, and hone your abilities. Did you hear what I just said? Family is God's design. You see, all this thing we're talking about, marriage, singlehood, and all that, all that God is really interested in is family. Pastor, Pastor B, God is a family God. He created man in his own image, said, be fruitful, multiply. God wants a family of his, of his creation in the earth, a family of mankind. He's always looked for a family. When God wants to do anything, he does it through family. God is not a CEO, he's a father. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said, God is not basically a CEO. He's a father. He does, he does family. Why? When you get family right, you get every other thing right. So if you're going to be a wholesome single person, you need relationships, family relationships. You must be plugged into family. Whatever that means, you need to find a way to be connected to family. Family gives you identity. Family helps you discover your ability. Family helps you take responsibility. Family keeps you accountable. Write those four things down. Identity, ability, responsibility, and accountability. If you are not writing, I don't know how to help you. If you are not writing in any format, I don't know how to help you after now. You know, people go into marriage. They, they, you, you, people take exams to, 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 take, to get a job. They take courses to, to, go to, to, to be promoted on their job. But when it comes to marriage issues that you're going to be spending the rest of your life in, you don't have any notes, no books, no material that has prepared you for marriage. Marriage is the only institution where you get a certificate before you start going to class. You didn't want to say. Ugo, did you hear what I They will give you a certificate and you now start going to class. Isn't it wise that you start taking some classes now as a single person? You are, listen, you are out of order. If as a single person you don't have any book, any material, any, any jotter that is for your that, that prepares you, that you've written things down concerning who you want to be, concerning your marriage, concerning what God is working, the things you are learning about marriage. And don't even stop it after marriage. I went back to some of the, some of the sweet notes I sent to my wife. 2004, 2005. How many years now? 18 years. Some words I was sending to her when I was high. Show Katala. When I found this Uzua Kole Queen that grew up in Kano, that I met in the sweet campus of ABU Zaria, I used to write her. Those days there was no WhatsApp. There was no. All we had was we had BB. What, what, what did Blackberry? Yeah. So we used to. What, what do you call sending pink? Yeah. Uh, so I had the, the free calls. Those days I was. I would. I was. 11.30 or 12. When they used to have free calls. They used to do all those things. What's in shaking here? Does it still exist? Ah, those free calls were, were our, they, we maximized it. I used all my Alawi, most of my Alawi to call my wife while I was serving. Because I was, I was courting her while I was serving. I asked her to marry me just the day before I went to serve. Amen. And you know, that's another story. If you pay me, I'll tell you some more. So family is powerful. Why? God designed family to shape us. So you need natural family. Write it down. You need natural family. You need spiritual family and any other kind of family that will shape you into all that God wants you to be. Statistics have it that people who grow up within the family setting become their better leaders, 
they are better in their identity, their self-worth. Are you listening to what I'm saying? People who grow up within family, they turn out to become better people in society. There's something about family. Don't, don't rob a child of family. If you rob a child of family, you are robbing us of a person who can become an influential person. Many of us turned out the way we are because we didn't grow up in family settings. We didn't grow up with family or, or we grew up in dysfunctional families. We grew up with just our mother or grew up with just our father or we grew up in, with, with an uncle or with a grandmother. We didn't grow up in an environment where there was a father figure, a mother figure and all of those things. So family is important. Sometimes it leaves us. That, that's why the word whole means without damage or some, something that is complete. So when, when we don't have that full input of family in our lives, we are left dysfunctional in areas of our lives. I'm talking about myself to every one of us. One way, some of you can have fathers and mothers, but they didn't bring the full weight of parenting into your life. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So this is not in any way to talk down people who lived with single parents. No, I'm just saying that somehow God is always trying to make up with what you lost as a result of not having complete full expression of family. Some of your fears today is because of family dysfunctionality. Some of your habits today is because of family dysfunctionality. Some of your insecurities today is because family was not family. Your exposure to certain habits was because of family. Abuses, different things because family was dysfunctional. But I pray in the name of Jesus that in the name of God will cause you to, to find expression and find his purpose and find true family in this season. That you live a wholesome life. Psalm 68 verse 6. Psalm 68 verse 6. Am I helping anybody today? You need family. Then I just do my own thing. No, you need family. It's not, it's not a good idea. It's a God idea. It's not, it's not an option. Uh, I can live without family. No, no human being is designed to live without family. God set it the solitary, which means if you're not in a family, you are in solitary. He set it the solitary in families. He set it the solitary. God always makes sure he puts, once you've, listen, after the devil shatter. If you're not in a family, the Bible calls you a person in solitary. Go and check the word solitary in, in, in that context. It means somebody who is, who is without company. He said, he bringeth out those who are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in dry ground or dry land. So there's something about not being in family that can leave you bound in chains or leave you rebellious. Because listen to me, one of the powers that come to that in fatherhood is that in, 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 the, in, the, in the relationship of fatherhood, God deals with the spirit of the orphan or the orphan spirit. The rebellious spirit is the spirit of the orphan. So he deals with that dry land, which means your life becomes dry if you don't have family. Look at someone and say, you are my family. What am I saying today? If you're a single person, today, today, ask yourself, where is family for me? Who is family for me? If you don't have one, we must decide this season of your life because it's in needed before you build a family. You are not qualified to start a family if you have not been in family. You didn't hear what I said. Men who are not established in family don't bet families, they bet courts. You need to have received family love to produce an atmosphere for that same thing to reproduce itself. Indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So you need family. So for natural family, I pray God is healing natural families. Whatever natural families are in dysfunctional states, God is healing that. But I also believe for the purpose of this meeting that God wants you to have spiritual family. God makes up for what natural family could not do by giving you spiritual family. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You shouldn't lose in natural family and then come to spiritual family and lose too. Look around. Look around somebody. That's, this is your family. Do you believe what I just said right now? Get out of your seat. Go out of your seat and just tell somebody you are part of my life. I am, I am, I see you as family. Come on, go love somebody. Go love somebody. I'm helping you shift something in your mind. This is family. This is family. 
the church of Jesus Christ. You have you are no more foreigners, you are no more strangers, but you can you have become part of the family of God. Ephesians 2. That's who you are. You are part of me. I'm part of you. Come on, stop coming to church and behaving like you showed up in some seminar. No, this is family meeting. This is your spiritual house. This is your home. Come on, you sat down too quickly. Go to three more people and tell them, I, I need to get to know you. There's a brother, there's a sister you don't know yet. You've been forming for each other. Stop that forming. This is family. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Praise God. You may be seated. So family is key. Family is key. The local church is God's family. God always wanted a family. Every of that relationship must stem from family relationship. Marriage is a subset of family. What God, why God even allows some marriage is because he wants to bet a family. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Family is top on God's mind. So if you're not married and you're in family, you're still in God's will. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the purpose of marriage is for you to create a family. But if you're in a family already and you're single, you're whole. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because of where family, family helps you go through the stages of life. A child at infancy is born into a family. So he that child received the love of a, of, of a family. He's taken care by a family. So why that is happening? God is teaching brothers to take care of younger ones. I mean, am I talking to somebody? He's teaching somebody to be an uncle. He's teaching somebody to be an auntie. He's teaching somebody to take care of a child that is not your own. How many of you have done a mugo and you're not married? You've done a mugo, wave your hand, you've, or you've taken care of children that are not your own. Come on now, what did that do to you? Preparation. You say, no, I don't like kids. Don't worry, you marry. Children are coming. Something like God just give you two twins, two sets. Then the depression of your life will come. I don't like children. They are too, they're not too organized. You work. <laughs> so family teaches you all that. You learn disorganization. You learn everything. You learn how to organize. Am I talking to someone? So when you learn to carry your, your sister's children and you learn to take care of your younger ones. My wife is a firstborn of six children so she learned to take care of her younger ones at age 12 13 her mother will leave home something was already happening because family shapes us leadership begins in family some people were born just only child you know the syndrome can follow you so everywhere you go you want your space your time your your bed did we have did i have a bed growing up what does that mean? I don't understand what it means. Maybe. No, we had mattress. Everybody line up. When my mom came into the room, you wake everybody at the same time. It was like cereal waking up. Do you know what I'm talking about? We want to eat. Everybody sit around the food. Do you know Otto? Igbo people, do you know Otto? Kokoya and porridge. Hey, hey, hey. For Korea, for Yorubas, with fish and everything. My mom used to put it in tray. Not all this tray now, tray then. That tray, if it hits your head, you know. You sit around it, everybody sits around the tray. You sit. You pray first, teaches you patience. You'll be looking at the food, you say, wait, let's pray. That's what family does. Am I talking to somebody in here? You sit, you wait. Then everybody is sitting around it. You sit where my mom put her leg, put her person's leg. We sit around you, give you a spoon. You now pray. After praying, you now start eating. You leave the meat. You leave it. You don't, you worship it. You wait. It teaches you patience. You, it, makes, it helps you give honor to whom honor is due. It's when I got to university, I found out you can be eating meat while you're eating food. It's a Yoruba culture. In Igbo culture, how? You wait for the meat. The meat is the glory that is set ahead of you. Eh? I, I didn't know because it was in while I was on camera, you'd be eating meat, you'd be eating ever. No, no, no. You wait. You honor that meat. I didn't know it could be that. So we now do that. 
and then after that you go and wash the plate after that there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a what's it called a roll call of who is washing plates who is sweeping the ground are you getting what i'm saying those things shaped you and made you a kind of person so what family does is fam you learn selflessness so you can be in a church and you're not in that church and you're not learning anything because you come and we are serving you and you're not serving anyway. So some of you are still babies in this church because you're not serving. Even Shefa has work now in my house. Even if he's true. Pastor B, what are some of the work that he has right now? Yes. Eh? What does he do? Go up. Shefa pours water on the ground. And it's a mop, mop, mop. You go and get mop and clean it. Amen. He's two years plus. And God help you, you want to clean it for him. No, he says, no, he clean it. Something is being put there because family is designed to shape us. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, another family can say, no, he's a child, he's a child, just leave him. Just leave him. Um, Njideka, what's the name of, what names do you give to house helps? Bosse. Akpan. Come and clean the water for you. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong in house help. I'm saying don't train your house help and untrain your children. Because that your house help will become a better person. You will marry into a house and become a better wife. But your children will become people who don't know how to touch anything. Kingdom influence, they wash plates, they wash their clothes, they know how to use the washing machine. Whether it's clean or not, they wash it. They are learning, they're learning to iron their clothes. Nothing wrong with having help. But I'm saying don't have a help at the expense of your children. Let, let them walk with the help. Because there's some help you need that your children may not be able to offer. Am I helping anybody? So family instills values of selflessness, of love, of honesty, of ethics, of honor, of integrity. So we, as a child, you, so you learn, I do, you learn all of those things. And that's so powerful. I can't go on with that. The next relationship you need is a relationship with fathers or mothers. I've thought these things, but I want to just restate them. You need relationship with fathers and mothers. By that, I mean covering relationships. You as a single person, these things I'm teaching is so powerful. If you learn these things, you'll enjoy singlehood. You will not feel your life is wasting. You need fathers and mothers you need coverings this is a relation of those you look up to you need mentors you need influencers you need people who have gone ahead of you you need people who you look up to your covering is very important there is no house that is really a house if it doesn't have a roof the bible describes a house a foundation then a structure then it has a roof everyone every single person you must never live without people that are speaking over your life who you are looking up to who you are learning from am i helping anybody here today as a single lady do you have a mentor in your life who is a mother who is a wife who is somebody you sit on and say teach me how to be a mother teach me how to be a wife teach me how to be uh, different things and be, and, and be dexterous the way you are as a single man do you have a, a mentor do you have a father figure in your life that covers you that that postures manhood to you that shows you what it's like to be a man a father a brother an uncle and all of that you need that please Young ladies, don't marry any guy who doesn't have a covering over his head. Did you hear what I said? Don't marry one of the things, questions you ask any guy that wants to marry you. Who are your mentors? Who, 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 is, who are the fathers in your life? Who are the, who are the people who speak over you? Who are the people if they call you, you respond? Any man that does not have a, a covering over him is a monster. He's suffering from the spirit of orphanhood. Like I've shared with you over and again, it's only Satan that does not have anybody over him. Did you hear what I just said? It's only Satan that does not have anybody. Nobody talks to him. He makes his decision. He decides where he wants to go. He goes where he wants to go. It's only Satan that, that is officially in God's design in that state. So any man that says, I don't have anybody I look up to. I don't have anybody that is mine. Nobody can tell me what to do. I'm the Lord of this relationship. I tell you what to do. Man, that's already a red flag. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You need a man that is covered because you cannot cover if you are not covered. 
You're not permitted to be a father if you have not been fathered. You need influencers, those who speak over you. Every single person needs a covering. You can't cover if you have not been already covered by another. You need to deal with that orphan spirit. Those who are not cover, covered, they build cults, not families. That's why you need covering relationships. You need it for counsel. Somebody say counsel. Single, say counseling. Touch a single person beside you and say you need counseling. If you find you that scripture is saying the multitude of counsel, there is what? Safety. There's safety. There's safety. You, there's safety in the multitude of counseling. Emmanuel, you need people who can counsel you. Don't marry a guy who's not ready to go through marriage counseling. Or a lady who's not ready to go through marriage counseling. If you don't value marriage counseling, you don't value marriage. Did you hear what I just said? Write it down. I value marriage counseling. Some of us in marriage, we are, we are having post-marital counseling. How much more? Those of you who have not entered. I and my wife will sit with our mentor for five hours, for three hours. We are talking about our marriage. Then those of you who have not entered, you say, no, I, don't, I know what to do. I, I know what to do. You know what you, you know what you want to do? Hollywood. Nollywood. All the things they showed you, my men don't cry. Don't worry, you will cry. <laughs> men don't cry. Men don't show emotion. Where did you get all those things from? You got it from uh, all the... <laughs> Just, uh, say women are women are. you make conclusions about women because of what you, you you were talking with your brothers over or some men over Ishew, and you think that is how women are you know women you don't tell them all the money you have oh. where did that come from because you don't have a relationship with God if you had a relationship with God you know his word that you are now joint here with your wife you are not 50-50 with your wife you are 100-100 Marriage is not a contract, it's a covenant. Shh. In contract, you get 20, 30, 50, 60. In covenant, it's mixed. You don't know whose blood you are using. Ah, am I talking to somebody in here? So those who enter marriage as... Don't you see, the Western world has produced, has shown us marriage as contract. Marriage is not a contract. That's why all these footballers that are rich, they can't marry. All the celebrities, they can't marry per covenant, they marry per contract because they know <laughs> with more wealth, with more influence, with all of that something can happen, so from the day where you married, your heart is not fully there because you know one day something can happen and I have my way out believers, we don't marry like that till death do us part and we stand before God and we make a commitment to a man and to a woman that's why you cannot have marriage in secret. That's why the marriage, you, you, you watch the movie of a guy carrying a girl and they ran away in a, in a, in a, in a truck and they went somewhere. So they told you, hey, oh, this would be great. I need to run away from this Nigeria. I need to jack back. Listen to me. If you were running away from family to go and start another family, you would start a dysfunctional family. Some people got married because they wanted to just run. Let me run away from this. this. So if you want to go and start family, you will now find out that you carried baggages. Am I helping anybody? So you need relationship with counseling. Sit down. There are things we teach you. We have about 12 to 13 lessons in our counseling in Manifold where we teach you certain things about marriage. Not two months before you get married. Not one month before you get married. At least six to eight months before you get married. Or even earlier. Some people come to our counseling just so that uh, we can fulfill all righteousness. No. And we are rushing you. We are teaching you um, uh, conflict resolution in, in 30 seconds, 30 minutes. Who does that? Conflict. <laughs> conflict resolution you will see how the word is heavy you want to learn it in 30 in one hour just teach quickly conflict resolution okay, if you quarrel you quarrel say 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 i'm not I'm, I, say sorry yeah, you say sorry that's not how uh, conflict resolution you get level have you heard of silent treatment in marriage where two people are sleeping on the same bed but they are in one is in samfara the other one is in katangori pastor zach the way you're looking at me do you know what it means for, for a man and his wife to be quarreling for 10 days? And the man will look. He say, I cannot go anywhere. I cannot go and commit sin. I cannot have sex with another lady. This is the only solution to my life. And even the Bible says that my prayer cannot be answered. 
So in those 10 days, all the prayer you are praying, Satan is telling you, <laughs> Good Lord, anywhere. You don't cross it anywhere. Shaka baka Yeah. Go and settle with your wife. The way some people are smiling, they are getting this message. So if you are still, you still have degree in quarreling as a single person, don't marry yet. Calm down. You see, little things annoy me. Ah, calm down. You are not ready. It's not big things that annoy me. It's little things. Oh, too ready. <laughs> hey, in marriage, there are little things. It happens daily. Little things like... <gasps> when did I die? I thought you were... What is this? Pastor. Little things like, please, you are smelling now. Just move. The love of your life oh, that you stood before God and vowed. He's now you love him. You don't love his shit. You don't love his smell. Am I helping anybody? So, singleness is not a disease. You are in preparation. Enjoy it while it lasts. I like the way you laughed. Just good. Praise God. So in relationship with fathers, you learn what? Submission. What did I say you learn with God? You learn spirituality. In the second relationship, you learn what? Selflessness. In the third relationship, you learn submission. Because listen to me, a man that cannot submit to anybody, that can, does not have a pastor over his life, does not have any leader over his life, I tell you, that man will deal with you. He only loves you. He doesn't submit to anybody. He will deal with you. I know of marriages today that are in a mess because nobody can call the husband to order. Nobody. He has decided what to do. He has done it. And I... No, 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 no. That's why we don't get married. We get married before the church. We get married in an... People don't understand. There are dimensions in your process as a single person. There is, there is, there is connection. There is certification and there is consummation can I work on that you don't get married until there is consummation by that I mean you, you, certifications means that there are certain people your, your parents the, the law go to the law court your parents the family must accept two of you the, court, the, the state must accept two of you then the highest level of your family which is spiritual family in marriage your spiritual family is more important than your natural family. I didn't get any amens. Yes, because in your mind, you still have an Igbo thinking and a Yoruba thinking. In this kingdom, this kingdom is an everlasting. It was not your natural family that originated marriage. They cannot be the final say. I listen to what I'm saying. Now you respect them when concerning certain things. You honor them. Honor your father and mother. It's important. But I'm saying that you don't become married. You don't become married when help me. You don't become married if you are born again just because your parents have said we have given you out in traditional word. Oh Lord, help me. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Are you a family? Are you part of this family? Yes. You do not, you are not yet married according to the scripture and our doctrine and the word of God. You are not yet married just because your father and mother has given you out in marriage. No. You belong to families in levels. You belong to a natural family. You wait. After the, then you go to the state. You get your legal papers. You go to the court. You are not yet married. You are only married when you stand before God and his own church and his own institution on earth because that is your greatest that's your eternal family some of you are not receiving this thing where the way you are saying should I stop now why can't you wait two months three months that's your, the problem you can't wait two three months to come to the altar and stand before God you say no we are already married no 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 you come before God if you can't wait three months I'm telling you <laughs> yeah, in marriage you will you will you will wait longer let me tell you 
Fornication is preparation for adultery. It's rehearsal. It is, it is licensing you for that. Because I hope you know, marriage, wedding does not change you. The same you. I've heard people three days after they have wedding, even wedding night, they are still talking with their ex. The week of their wedding, they still slept with somebody else. So marriage does not change you. Or wedding does not change you. What changes you is Christ and the love of Christ in you. So when you, when you are, when you are in that period waiting until your wedding day, God is teaching you consecration. God is teaching you patience. God is teaching you owning your own body. Because I hope you know, even in marriage, there'll be times your wife is not around. There'll be times you travel. There'll be times you'll be away with yourself, from yourselves. It is that rehearsal you had in courtship that helps you in marriage. Are you guys getting me? We, are, we love ourselves. We're going to marry. Why shouldn't we sleep with you? That this reason I'm giving to you now. And then the Bible says this is your sanctification, that you flee fornication. The day you get married as a believer is the day you stand before God and his church, before God and a priest, before God and his spiritual influence. If you are a believer, if you're not a believer, you can claim to be married. Whew. Next relationship, I'm almost there. Relationship with, with friends. You need, you need friendships. Those who you share your life with. The power of friendship is so powerful. A friend, the Bible says, that sticks closer, closer to it than the brother. You need friendship. Look at someone and say, you need friends. Touch someone again and say, you need friends. David and Jonathan had a wonderful relationship and they enjoyed friendship and it was covenant relationship. Jesus called his disciples after a while his friends and you need to learn friendship. As a single person, you need friends. You need you need, you need. Relationship with God, you need relationship with fathers, you need relationship with family, but you need relation with friends. What do friends do in your life? Friends, friends make your life fun. Friends walk along the path of life with you. Friends add in your life in a very significant way. The difference between family relationships and friendship is that you don't choose family, you choose friends. Oh, did you hear what I just said? You don't necessarily choose family. You are born into it. Uh, did you hear what I said? But friendships are relationships you intentionally choose. Who you say, these people, they're going my way. They have my values. They understand what I, 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 I understand. They share my values and all that. And you do life with them. As a single person, have robust friendships. You must have a number of people in your life who you do life with as friends. Who you do life with what is called unfeigned love. Who you do life with just friendship. Where, who you can enjoy company. You can enjoy covenant with at a level that is platonic and that is, that, that is, that is rewarding. I pray that God will give you good friends. I have friends who were, who were together as teenagers, we were together in our, in our mid-twenties, and we are still friends today because there's something about friendship. It's the, you, need, you, need, you need friends to, to go through seasons of life with. A life without a friend is a very, very dysfunctional life. You need a friend. Look at someone and say, you need a friend. The thing about friendship is that you learn sacrifice. Do you agree with me? Greater love has no man than this, that he should lay down his life for his friend. How many of you have some friends that are really getting on your nerves, but you just sacrifice? You just know how to just get them into your space. They squat with you. They, they get in your life. You, they can get away with some things because a true friend is in your corner. You need that. The, re the reason why you need friends is that even when you get married, you need healthy relationships at this level, horizontally. It's not everybody you want to meet that is a mentor. It's not everybody you meet that is, you know, this or that. Not, not, but there are people who do life with you, who go alongside life with you. There are things you can tell a friend. Sometimes you can't even tell a brother. Because like I said, you don't choose family. You choose, you choose friends. So I pray God give you real friends. As a single lady, you need friends both of the opposite sex and people of your of your of your of same sex you need friendships 
and those friendships should be what we call unfeigned love, should be guarded with what we call unfeigned love, where you can have a sincere guy in your life who is just a friend and you can define the boundaries and you enjoy friendship. Because even as a married person, you, can, you still need friendships. Am I talking to somebody? Is there any married person that knows what I'm talking about? You still need friends. Both male and female. I still have female friends in my life. I think I, I said to myself lately, I have an unconscious women ministry. I need to become conscious of it. Amen. I have ladies in my life, but you see, your true opposite sex friends will survive your marriage. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Am I helping anybody now? Your, if, if you have a lady who's your friend and you get married as a man, if that person is truly your friend, she will connect with your wife. Any friend you have that is opposite sex as a single person, when you get married, they don't want to relate to your husband or to your wife. You need to be careful about such relationships. It has broken marriages. Some married women here can tell you, when their husband is speaking call by 10, by 11, who is that person? He's like, we are, we are in school together. We were really very good friends. Madam, Oga, calm down. You are now married. But if that person is in your wife's life or your husband's life, it's, it becomes easier to manage those relationships. It means that they don't have an ulterior motive. Are you getting what I'm saying? You need such friends. You need friends who... You don't put the pressure of them becoming your husband or wife. They are just your friends. Because even after you marry, they will not be your husband or your wife. Praise God. Have I helped anybody? Finally, you need followers. Followers means you need people that you are pouring into. You need people you are discipling. You need people who are looking up to you. You need people who you are influencing. You need people who you are also parenting who you are pouring into every single person you need to begin to learn and say who are the people that I'm influencing you need to be an influencer as a single person before you get married you need to influence your nieces your nephews you need to influence children around you you need to influence people around you you need to be a parent even though you are not married you need to be a discipler that's why we say start discipling people. And it has, it's it, it, because discipleship is almost, is parenting. And you need to learn how to pour into people. Can, is there a list of people who you pour into as a single person? That relationship, that kind of relationship is preparing you for marriage. And in this relationship, you learn service. So what are the five things you learn? You learn spirituality. You learn selflessness. You learn submission, you learn sacrifice, you learn service. All of these S are things you need to learn as a single person. And you need to begin to learn even before you get into marriage. My prayer for you is that you will find this season of your life, you know, uh, uh, you know functional and you become a person who knows how to be whole in this season that God will give you the relationships you need to become all that he has called you to be I want to pray for single people today and I want to believe God that he's preparing you preparing you for marriage preparing you for what he's called you to be preparing you for the future and he's, he's causing you to learn spirituality, he's causing you to learn selflessness, he's le causing you to learn sacrifice, he's causing you to learn service, he's causing you to learn submission Father, thank you. Can we just pray this this morning and just receive this word? La crovetele brocota shandra hatale brocotolo sata. I want every single person to say, Lord, teach me. Teach me these things, oh God, in this season of my life. Teach me spirituality in my relationship with you. Teach me submission in my relationship with coverings and spiritual authority and, and the people over me. Teach me, Lord Jesus, sacrifice with friends. Teach me, Lord Jesus, say pro the service with those I pour into. Teach me, Lord Jesus, vetron vendini and a selflessness with family, oh God. Teach me so that I become that person you've called me to be. I become wholesome even whilst I wait. I become wholesome even whilst I wait. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. So Rabakata Rabashindaha. O Veneneshtele Brakata Rabasatala. Zedeleba. Thank you, Lord. Receive this living sacrifice. Accept, accept this living sacrifice. I am your worship. Listen to me as I begin a round of Tuesdays. Uh, what do they call it now? Valentine and all that. I want you to, before that day, just you know get before the Lord and receive the love of the Father because if you receive the love of the Father you will not be intimidated by what's going on on social media are you listening to me as a single person if you receive the love of the Father you will find your identity in God so that if there's not a guy in your life who's taking you out on Tuesday you can go in with your heavenly Father are you listening to what I'm saying you are not losing anyway. So you have the benefit of your heavenly father to connect with on Tuesday. You have the benefit of family to spend time with on Tuesday. You have the benefit of friendships to spend time with on Tuesday. Am I talking to someone? You have the benefit of your followers, of all of these elves. Find any of them to do life with this Tuesday if you don't have a relationship leading to marriage. And even if you have one leading to marriage, don't consume yourself just in that because I tell you, you'll be a wholesome person if you settle these other areas of love. Amen. So for those of you who are in relationships leading to marriage, I want you to do it right. Make up your mind that you get it right. Make up your mind that you will do it God's way. Make up your mind to, to look through all of these different relationships and ask yourselves, how are we established in all of these relationships? That's what's going to make you wholesome. Let's stand together this evening. I want every... I just want to pray for two sets of people. I want to pray for every single person here. That God will make you whole. That God will plant you in relationships that makes your life wholesome. Would you receive it right now? Thank you, Father, for these ones who will not go into marriage damaged. Oh, I'm praying for somebody. I say you will not go into marriage damaged. I, I reduce the, the damage and the luggage and the baggages that a lot of people enter into marriage with. I pray for you that through these relationships we've talked about, you will be established, you'll be shaped into the man and into the woman God has designed you to be. Receive these words that I speak. I declare... That whatever damage I've been causing your life as a result of wrong relationships, today I declare there's a healing. I said I declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you find family, you find friends, you find fathers, you find followers in the name of Jesus. pray for those who are in relationships leading to marriage. I pray that the Lord will keep you. He will keep you in his purpose. He will keep you in his plan. I pray that the things you've heard today will guide you into living a wholesome life. I pray that your relationship under God will be wholesome in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus' precious name. Clap your hands. Give God praise. I said clap your hands.